case that I've been looking at with a young man called Jose Duval uh, Mata Alvaral, and I can pass obviously on all the details to your team. His mother was bringing food to the prison where he was at. It turns out he'd been moved to the Secot some weeks, months in fact, earlier, while she was faithfully bringing food to the prison. Seems like he's completely lost in the system. And there are two Ordenes de Liberación in his name, one as recently as June last year. Uh, and yet uh, he's simply not been released, even though the 20 days is obviously now six months ago, by which time he should have been out. Um, I'm wondering what, if, if your intention is to sort of work on the legal side of things, uh, assuming you win today and that you are president for the next five years. Well, it's important to say that every police in the world, because I find this some, somewhat amusing when they say, oh, but you know, in El Salvador, they arrest people and some of the arrested are innocent. And I'm a little baffled because I wonder if in the UK all of the arrests are of guilty people or your police some, sometimes arrest innocent people. I mean, I bet there will be a percentage of people arrested by UK police, the police of the government that you work for, and they will arrest sometimes innocent people as a mistake or because they, were, they had a, a wrong tip, or, or, but they will go to a judicial system. If there were no arrest of innocence in any, in, if there was one police in the world, one for police force, UK, uh, Spain, France, you name it, any country, the US, Canada, any police force that has only, that has zero percentage of margin of error, they're all, they only arrest guilty people. Why, you, why will you need? prosecutors or defense or a justice system. You won't need that because the police is perfect in your country. So every country in the world will have an imperfect police. Now, it is different when you have in countries that uh, promote ethnic clean cleansing, for example, or, or they promote or they arrest political opponents or they arrest a minority. But, but in our case, all of the arrests are made to end the bloodshed that was, uh, that was, that we lived for decades, and we have ended it. Now, did our police made a couple of mistakes? Of course they did. That's why our judicial system has been freed innocent people, and they will free every innocent people that, that the police has wrongly arrested. And we have already freed 7,000 people. Now, I would, I would assume that the, the criticism may come from a, a, a hypothetical country that doesn't have any, any arrest of innocents. But I'm sure that in the UK, they do plenty of arrest of innocent people, and then they are proven innocent in, in court. But sometimes, and we have seen a lot of cases in the US, in the UK, in Europe, that they find them that they're innocent 20, 30 years be, uh, after being convicted because they found some DNA evidence. So what does that mean? That means that you shouldn't arrest criminals? No, it means that police made a mistake and some retributions have to be made to the people that have been arrested wrongfully. But we don't, um, we don't think, we think it's, it's weird or we're baffled by, by the criticism of something that you know, you well know, that any police in the world would make, which is a small percentage of, of innocent people getting in the net. One point on that, of course, yes. though, is that 75,000 people in the space of a year isn't regularly arrested by police anywhere else in the world, and that this is a unique situation with unique powers given to the security forces to make arrests on site according to criteria de deemed by them. Yes, of course, because we, you, you don't live in the world murder capital. So when you don't live in the world murder capital, it's because you don't have enough murderers to, f to fill a prison like ours. Because the difference is that in the UK, the UK is not the world murder capital. El Salvador was, by your own accounts, the world murder capital. So if we have the world murder capital, the most dangerous place in the world, the, the place in the world with the most murders, why is that? Because we have the place in the world with the, most, with the biggest amount of murderers. So of course, you cannot arrest 70,000 people because you don't have 70,000 murderers because you're not the murder capital of the world. But we did have 70,000 murderers, and that's just a, 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 a number that coincidentally is the number that we arrested. 
Every study made by the World Bank, by the, by the uh, NGOs, by the experts, way, way before our government established that they were at least 70,000 gang members and 500,000 collaborators. That was established not by our government, but by NGOs, by the experts in the, in the, in the, in the, in the topic. They always said, El Salvador has at least 70,000 gang members and half a million collaborators. So you would expect that to end that, you would need to arrest 500, 70,000 people. But of course, we want to be careful and don't arrest the lady that probably helped because she, she thought that she needed to help because her life was in danger. So we're sparing 85% of the tally that your or find that the organizations that you finance established way before our government. So why do we have the biggest incarceration rate in the world? Because we ended, we changed the murder capital of the world, the world's most dangerous country, in the, into the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. And the only way to do that is to arrest all the murderers. There's no other way to do it. Well, the other way to be to kill all the murderers, but we're, we don't have death penalty, so we have to arrest all the murderers. So you say, why, why is such a big number? Well, what do you expect? That we arrest 100 people and we leave 6, 69,900 gang members in the streets and suddenly the, the murder rate will drop? Or do you expect that we, because we're Salvadorans or something, because we're second class citizens or something, we have to die? They have to kill our families, they have to kill our children, they have to, because your uh, liberal ideas of what a democracy should be have to be respected, and we, since we're not using your recipe, then we have to be killed, we have to let our children be killed, we have to let the bloodshed to go on for 50 years because of imported policies from your countries, because your countries are lecturers in the 80s, the war. You had a fight with the Soviet Union, had nothing to do with us. What did you do? You financed El Salvador to fight a war be between us, between brothers. And, they, and we, killed each, we killed each other and 85,000 Salvadorans died. After that, a million displaced. They went to the U.S. into ghettos. They formed the gangs, then they deport the gangs. Gangs come here. You sent us another recipe. Law to don't arrest minors. Okay, but all the gang members were minors at the time. So gangs grew, and then they terrorized the country. They started killing people, and we became the murder capital of the world. Nobody could solve it. We, we took the recipes from the OAS, we took the recipes from the UN, we took the recipes from the European Union, we took the recipes from the United States. None of the recipes worked. More bloodshed, more people were dying. So what do we do? Okay, we do something and we save people, and now we're the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. But suddenly something's bad. Oh, but you shouldn't do that. You should do what I think you should do. Why? If it, not only we have the right to do what we think is right and the, what the Salvadoran people are going to decide whether or not they want this day in, in free elections, but also we've proven it works. And you haven't proven that your system works in our country. Might work in yours, I don't know. But it doesn't work in ours. It's like I told one time, um, a member of the European Union, I know you, 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 you Brexited that, but I told a member of the European Union, you take your best government, choose your best government, I, I, know, I don't know what's your best, the best government in Europe, but you choose your best government. Same people, same talent, same experts, same will to do things the right way. You take your best government and you put them to govern Afghanistan and tell them, okay, you govern Afghanistan the same way you govern this European country. They'll be dead in a week. Because you cannot govern Afghanistan like you govern Europe. So stop trying to, 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 to make us use your recipes because they don't work here. You have your, you have your own system. We're, we don't tell you that you shouldn't have a monarchy. I mean, we're fine with your monarchy. We, we love your monarchy. It's fine. But we don't say, oh, you shouldn't have a monarchy and you shouldn't have hereditary titles. In, uh, why? Because it's your country. You can do whatever you want with it. But suddenly, we have to do what you want to do with our country. So, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna uh, finish the question is that this has been proven by all of you and by uh, all independent sources. El Salvador was turned from the most dangerous place in the world to the safest in the Western Hemisphere. That's not a small feat. And that's not done easily. 
And nobody in the world has ever done it before, so fast and so clean like we have done it here, with no civilian casualties. So, I don't know. I know it's different. I know the numbers from the UK and ours will be different for maybe a couple of decades. But we're doing our best here, and we're really trying, and the Salvadoran people today are going to vote freely in free and fair elections and in full democracy and choose their own path. Thank you. Hello, guys, and the Salvadorians have chosen him to be their president for the next five years. So the Salvadorian people, for at least the most part, most of them, the majority of them who voted, like his method and want to continue on the path of what he's doing and they approve of him for the most part um this is uploaded by india today and the title is don't teach us how to run our country i agree with everything he said look is did they ever drop the ball in this mass experiment or project that they're doing to try to get the gang members and murderers off the street probably did some innocent fall into the bag of the bad yeah probably but he said that that's what the judicial system is for we get them we arrest we arrest them then we put them through the system and if they're innocent we let them go that's what it's for and it's working now short term will it still work 10 years from now 20 years from now if the people ever get their rights back and you know they don't have this over overarching power will it at some point become tyrannical i don't know but right now it's working and the salvadorians have spoken up to say that this is working and this is what we want for western cultures to try to compare apples and oranges like whoa have you arrested so many murderers though this is unusual it's like what do you want them to do just keep murderers on the street because it just makes your you feel better with your sensibilities like that doesn't really make any sense and you see a lot of the western liberal mentality now when it comes to criminal is like have all the empathy for the world for the criminals by letting them back on the street and commit crimes and the citizens of that country just have to like kind of stay quiet about it because it's just the right liberal way to go the, you know it makes people feel better with their sensibilities instead of just like punishing people who commit crimes you can re rehabilitate them you can keep them off the streets in the meantime so I agree with what he's saying I, I see his points and we will see in the next 10 20 30 40 years how this play out but right now the Salvadorian people, people have spoken and don't be a fucking colonizer and tell other people how to live their lives. I mean, you can speak out if there's actual oppression and genocide going on. Um, I, I saw that little dig he said, though, about the genocide thing. I saw that dig. I don't know what country it was towards, but I kind of have my ideas. Anyway... <laughs> If people are literally being oppressed and being genocided off the planet, then yeah, maybe we should speak up. But for the most part, we're not living there. I said in my last video I made of this, like, I don't know if I would want to give up some of my rights, my freedoms, freedom of speech, privacy, freedom to congregate together, some other rights that they had to lose to sort of have this power to just get people off the streets. I don't know as an American if I will be willing to do that, but I also don't live in this El Salvador, and I also never been through what the El Salvadorian people have been through, so I can't say what I would agree to if I was living in their, re their shoes and in their realities. But let me know what you guys think of this video. I didn't stop it i didn't think i was going to let it play the whole way through but i liked what the guy was saying so i just thought to play it and i just didn't really feel led to stop it or pause it because he was on a roll let me know what you guys think in the comment section below please like comment and subscribe hit that bell because the notifications when i do upload all that really does help with the algorithm guys you can donate my paypal my cash app link is in the description box below you can also super thanks if you super thanks for the comment i'll read it in the next video and you guys have an amazing day bye